I put water in here, and you see in my sight glass, see this glass here in the front? You can see the level of water. It should be about halfway. Um, it, it doesn't mean the water's up to here, but it indicates that there's plenty of water. It's, it's, it's missing. Okay. Can you see that? <coughs> so, um, that's about right. We're at about an hour, which is uh, which is just about right. I pack the still in about quarter to quarter to twelve. It's quarter to one, so it's starting to come over now. The electricity's heated up the water. The steam's coming up through the plant material. What do you think happens to the uh, these essential oil cells when the steam hits it? Bursts. It bursts it open. Do you think the oil dissolves in the steam? No, it doesn't. It actually just takes that droplet of oil, like a molecule of oil, and it suspends it. And it carries it up through here, because again, again steam wants to escape. It's you know on its own pathway. Um, and it comes down through this pipe. And in here, in the condenser, is a mass of coils that I'm pumping cold water uh, in and out of to keep it cold. It's cooling the steam back down into liquid. And so what is coming out here is water and oil. In this separator here, this really cute design here, again, my husband designed this, it's quite brilliant. I really have a clue how it works inside. Other than that, it will actually uh, separate the oil and the water. Now, generally, oil floats on top of water. Just think about it, if you try and add oil to, you know, pouring olive oil or an essential oil into water, it floats on top. Sometimes it sinks. It's, it depends on something called specific gravity, and if any of you are doing the Roma courses, you'll be learning about specific gravity. Um, so this particular uh, separator works with oils that, that float on top, and, um, and hopefully um, we'll start to see that separation occur. Basically what's happening is the oil and water are going to fill this little unit and when uh, the oil builds up all the way up that stainless steel tube, it'll start, the actual oil will start shooting out that into the glass container. So we should start seeing that in about 20 minutes. From one charge, we call this a charge, from one charge like this it really depends, we might get, if, you know, if the plant is good quality and we picked it at the right time and, the, and everything's doing well, we might get um, four or five ounces of oil. I think it makes you appreciate the um, <coughs> the value of essential oils. And you know, I mean, some of them are very expensive and you might wonder, goodness, why is it that expensive? Rose, for example, look how much rose costs. Because you, you might need about 4,000 rose petals to make maybe one or two drops. Is that called the hydrosol, the part that we're seeing now that is water? Is that what it's really referred to as the hydrosol is the material that is left after the essential oil is separated out. Okay. So that's what's going to have to come out yet. That's what we're going to get Yes. About how much plant oil went into the return? Right. So this is the size of what I had these full. Oh, two of these. Two of these. Two of these. Yeah, and not much stalk material. I mean, I've got a little bit of stalk because there is some essential oil in the stalk, but I would pick probably about this much of the flower head and the stalk. And then I just fold it in half and pack it right down. And of course, you do get some of the small florets broken off, so then I would just actually tip that into there. You know, I don't waste any of it. And this is actually a blend of um, angustifolia because we've got a couple of different types of varieties out here. Um, we've got the angustifolia, which is really your, your true lavender. Your angustifolia is really the lavender that is going to give you the nice, you know, sedative, calming, anti-inflammatory, soothing oil that we all think of as lavender. The uh, lavender, which is what is growing along the roadside, is a, is a much higher yielding plant. And it's actually um, a genetic creation by the French in order to improve the yield of essential oil. Um, 
Angustifolia doesn't give a particularly high yield, even though it's really a wonderfully fragrant, incredible plant, it doesn't really yield that high. Lavender yields more oil. However, the constituent breakdown of lavender is quite different. It has more camphor in it. And camphor is very stimulating. Sometimes people will buy a bottle of lavender and they'll say, well, I don't know, I've tried to use lavender for sleeping, you know, maybe they have insomnia, but it just didn't work. Maybe even more awake than ever. And of course the reason is that it's just the wrong variety. So just be careful of that. Um, of course, lavender is still beautiful. Uh, lavender is still very antiseptic, uh, which you wouldn't think of lavender as an antiseptic, but it's great for uh, abrasions or wounds, um, anywhere you need an antiseptic. And so lavender, and I love using it on the house. I use it for cleaning, I use it, I was going to say in my iron, and I do use it in my iron, iron but do I iron? No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it is in my iron, but um, I keep a bottle of it in the laundry of, of the Hydrolad because actually in my dryer, I'll put some um, Hydrosol or Hydrolad on like a flannel or a cloth, and then I'll put that in when I'm drying my clothes, particularly my, um, my uh, sheets and towels, so you know, it gives everything a lovely lavender of fragrance. Um, you can use it. In cooking, um, cookies. Yep, you can. You can use it for cookies and in cooking. Generally, I mean, it's going to start obviously, you know, at zero. And as it builds, we want it up to about 200. And um, it's probably not going to go much um, beyond that. And usually it will start coming over at about 150. So the temperature has to be at least 150. But there's no pressure in the system also either. So it's a This is 7.5 gallons. Yeah. So the, the volume of the of the retool. Obviously, safety is an issue around mm -hmm. something like this. It's very hot to touch, so don't brush against it. Um, you'll see when I distill, I have a variety of equipment, but the one thing I love is my gloves because if, for example, it suddenly developed a steam leak, which can happen. You've got to be very careful putting this lid on. If there's any like plant material in the groove where it sits down, steam will start escaping. And of course, when steam escapes, what does happen? <laughs> the oil is escaping. Exactly. When you only get four ounces, we can't. <laughs> so I keep my gloves handy. 